Thank you. So I call the regular meeting of the MWPA Board of Directors from November 17th, 2022 to order. And I'd like to have a roll call, please. Certainly. Director Molesworth of Bolinas Fire, I believe will not be joining us this afternoon. Just wanted to state for the record. Oh. We'll go forward with Director Paulson of Larkspur. Here. Director Burke of Mill Valley. Not here just yet. Uh, Director Kurtz of <clears throat> San Rafael. Not right here. <laughs> Director Donahue of Here. Director Evergettis of Kentfield. Here. Director Shea of Marina. Here. Director Jeschke of Muir Beach. Here. Director Goings of Novato. Here. Director Finn of Sleepy Hollow. Here. Director Hilliard of Southern Marin. Not quite here yet. Director White of Stinson Beach. <sighs> Did I hear Director White? Um, no. no. Uh, Director Ravasio of Corte Madera. Here. Director Kohler of Fairfax. Here. Director Berto of San Anselmo. Here. Director McMillan of Ross. Here. And present only of County Murray. Present. Martina, could you just confirm quorum is present, please? I believe we have a quorum, sir, and it looks like actually Director Kurtz from um, San Rafael just joined us. Very good. Welcome, Director Kurtz. Hello. Great. So we have a quorum, so we can do business. Uh, the first item is item three. Do any of the board members have any adjustments to the agenda? I would just make note that Martina sent out last night uh, amendments to item 6D, 6F, and 8A. So if you printed your agenda package prior to last night, you may have um, you may need to update your item 6D, 6F, and 8A. And we will have uh, uh, Megan explain some of those changes when we get to those items. Okay, see no one recommending a change to the agenda. The item four is open time for public public expression. The public is welcome to address the board of directors at this time on matters not on the agenda that are within the jurisdiction of this board. Please be advised that pursuing the government code section, the board is not permitted to discuss or take action on any matters not on the agenda. Comments may be no longer than three minutes and should be respectful to the community. Reminder to please silence your phone and mute your devices when not speaking. <clears throat> Martina, can we go see the, if there's anyone in the public who wants to direct, address the board today? Thank you. Hi, sir. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on any items not currently on the agenda, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone and star six to unmute yourself to speak. And sir, it does not appear that we have any comments for public expression. All right, thank you. So we'll move on to item five now, which is the ex executive officer's report. Mark Brown, turn it over to you. Good afternoon, President Redoni and board members. Uh, if someone can give me a thumbs up that you can see my screen, perfect. Um, it feels great to be able to be here in uh, um, November and say uh, there have been no fires uh, and recent fire weather has been very advantageous for us. And, you know, that's been one of the things that we've been noticing is that the dry period and the fire season or high risk season has been extending longer and longer. And it's just so nice to be able to have a period of, of weather and a fire season that kind of act like it used to act. But um, we definitely do not want to um, drop our guard. Um, a good friend of mine pointed out um, the conditions that we're in now are, are so similar to 2017, 2018, actually 2018, as we went into uh, what ended up being a campfire. So still not time to let our guard down, especially um, if you were watching the weather. Southern California actually had a really strong Santa Ana wind event, but fortunately, uh, no ignitions really occurred from that. I did want to highlight a thank you letter that we received from the Marin County Fire Services, specifically the HAZMAT team that was supporting some training that they used our board chambers. 
uh, for the training just because of its centralized location and its ability to have a large number of people. Upwards of 300 firefighters attended this uh, training. Um, so not only is it supporting our firefighters with some training locations, but um, this is, I feel that this is a way to help get some of our firefighters indoctrinated to the MWPA. A lot of them don't really know exactly what the MWPA is about and having them come into our offices, I think is gonna help create that stronger connection, especially if we start getting um, member agencies, uh, or excuse me, members of the public coming into the um, MWPA offices, that'll again, start helping. And then when we talk about in-person meetings, I'll talk a little bit more about the development of the office space. I didn't wanna highlight a recent article in a point raised light, actually a couple of articles, but um, they're highlighting the, the momentum that we're finally starting to get in West Marin after having a slow start uh, with the Coastal Commission and the Coastal Permitting process and getting in sync with the federal government. Um, we're actually starting quite a few projects. Anne's going to um, touch on them during her report, but I did want to just mention it that we have a great article in the Port Reyes Light about it. And also an interesting article about state parks addressing the Bishop Pine Preserve and um, Bishop Pines ha have pitch canker in them right now, the Bishop Pine Reserve in Marin, and it's a really, really unhealthy forest. And so it is going to take quite a bit of work. And so they're working on that now. Did want to let you know that staff is planning to have an offsite session um, coming up in December. And the reason for this is for us to have some um, staff uh, team building, especially now that uh, we have our, our five employees that we have, two Grizzly Corps fellows and our close connection with um, members of Fire Safe Marin and our contractors. Get, a little, get some synergies going with each other, find out uh, some situational awareness so we all know what each other is working on. And then we want to explore opportunities that we can explore as the MWPA, um, brainstorm about that. But a big portion of that meeting will be for us to work on our processes and, and flow of work within the MWPA staff to support all of our member agencies. Um, did have an opportunity to um, speak at the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Dominican University. Uh, do, uh, Farhad Mansurian invited me to be part of this. They were talking about different layers of government. And when they got to the Joint Powers Agreements, um, he had me, gave me basically an opportunity to display all the great work that the MWPA is doing. We've also made a very interesting connection with the Scripps Research Institute, and it's turning into a connection with the California Geological Survey. And that is to analyze the post fire debris flow risk. And if we could determine what that uh, risk is, it will help us prioritize where we conduct work within the Marin County. And lastly, um, I wanted to, again, update you because the, um, we are moving really fast and it's encouraging and, and, and exciting. An update on our insurance, for, um, insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety and our connection with their wildfire prepared home designation. As you probably saw, that um, state law is going to require that insurance companies provide a discount for residents who have met the Safer for Wildfire guidelines. And we really feel that the insurance companies are going to use the IBHS, Wildfire Prepared Home Designation, for that. And we've been working with IBHS for them to accept our inspections and our reports so that uh, IBH inspector doesn't have to come on to our resident's property the residents have to invite them, they have to pay for it. So we are working on a system that they'll accept all of our work. And we had a great meeting today with our DSpace leads for our member agencies to start narrowing down the beta properties for the beta test. So we're looking for five properties that we're gonna evaluate in December. And between December and May, we'll have a total of 25 properties that we're gonna have beta tested. If IBHS is comfortable with our process, we'll be able to enter into an agreement that we will bring to the board of directors for approval so that all of our residents will be able to enjoy the connection of our inspections to the wildfire prepared home designation. And with that, I'll take any questions you may have. Uh, Mark. <laughs> Oh, Dennis, you're muted. Yep. Thanks, Mark. I lost my screen there for a minute, so thanks for being patient. Questions for Mark? I think go to Gabe first, and then Barbara. Yeah. Um. Great. Thanks, Mark, for that. I 
was wondering if you could just say a little bit more about the Insurance Institute and, and the beta testing. I, you know, this is something that, you know, from our NRG groups and whatnot has been a really, um, you know, a great topic of interest. And I don't know what specifics you have, but, you know, what might this look like for a home in the WUI as far as, you know, insurance premiums or coverage or anything like that? You bet. So, you know, as you all know, one of the biggest concerns that our residents and specifically the WUI have is cancellations or non-renewals of their insurance. And this program will not only help eliminate the non-renewals and the cancellations, but it'll actually, if they receive the wildfire home prepared or wildfire prepared home designation, they will get a discount from their insurance provider. And there's two levels of discounts. There's levels of discounts for the individual home. And then if their entire community, such as Firewise communities, meet those guidelines, then um, there could be even a greater discount for our residents. Part of the training that we're going to embark upon with IBHS, and that's part of our plan that we have, is IBHS is going to help provide training for our defensible space evaluators and wildfire mitigation specialists, is to be able to explain to our residents during their evaluations exactly what the wildfire prepared home designation process is. And, and then it'll be easily connected to our um, defensible space report that they all receive. And we've actually already worked on the privacy policy, allowing the transfer of the data from our database to IBHS's only with the permission of the resident. Great. Thank you, Mark. Barbara. Yeah, um, thank you, Mark. That was a great report. And I think the insurance work is going to be particularly um, exciting for our residents. And I hope once we get that beta test done, we might be able to actually re even report to the insurance commissioner so they're aware that we're, you know, trying to save money for folks by doing one inspection. I just have sort of an offhand question. When we allow others to use our meeting space, which is great, uh, are we able to charge them to offset some of our costs or is that just something that we do as a courtesy? Uh, based on the lease that we have, we are unable to sublet. So it'll be a service of, for our member agencies and we'll, we'll focus it to our member agencies. Okay, it might be something in the future that we, I, I remember that in the least, and it might be something in the future that we could try to get changed because that is, from what I understand, a great meeting space. And it, not that I want you to start a new job called leasing out space, but it does seem like um, we might be able to offset some of our costs there and also create those synergies that you're working on. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Bruce, you're next. Uh, thanks uh, again, echoing Barbara's comments about the presentation, Mark, the briefing. My, my question is the Scripps Institute project, um, I, I'm wondering what the relationship of that is to the one TAM effort in the preparation of a regional priority plan and trying to leverage funding from the Coastal Conservancy, Department of Conservation and CAL FIRE. Um, I'm I'm assuming they're they're working together because the the, the problems that they're uh, asking are are indeed integral to um, you know prioritization of areas you know what what can and should be done where and what order so it, it and and secondly just I know I can answer that but is is there a link uh, that that you could share in regards to the Scripps Institute plan that I could take a look at just to get a better idea of what what kind of analysis and teamwork the team that they have. So we're at the very, very beginning of this, and there really isn't any um, data on that right now. I, I can dig within scripts, but within the California Geological Survey, yes, they have started working on that, and we're um, connected with CGS now. We're also been, um, had a meeting with um, Stanford and Lawrence Livermore Lab yesterday along these same topics. And the idea is once we get a little bit more foundation with the Scripps Institute research, we're going to connect with Lawrence Livermore Labs, uh, Stanford, and One Tam because we feel that this type of work will really help with our regional priority plan and the regional forest and fire capacity building program. Just a comment, then it sounds like from a time frame, um, the, the the RPP draft uh, we're, we're actually looking at uh, December. 
<clears throat> so it looks like the Scripps Institute, if, if you're in the formative stage right now, um, they, they might be able to build upon the one TAM uh, GIS analysis and uh, the analyses being done, uh, the, the, the ecosystem services modeling that they're doing, the threats to ecosystem services, and and in, hopefully integrate their analysis, you know, into or build off of. I just want to make sure that they're tied together because the RPP is going to be a real critical uh, leverage for for um, I think many years of 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 investment from the state of California in re, in reducing the risks hazards and risks here in, in Marin County. So I, I, I'd like to make sure that they're they're together, not uh, not not separate. Yeah, and we yeah. we're just right. Um, we think we're about a. I know we're going to be submitting our RPP in December and looking for a decision by March, whether or not we can get the monies from the regional forest to fire capacity building program. But we do think that this is going to help with that argument. And in about a month or two, we'll be able to start getting more of those connections going. Okay. Thank you, Mark. This is really cool stuff. Yep. Julie. Well, I have a much more basic and simple question, which is about the point raise light. I'm wondering if that article is posted on our website it just came out this morning, so we'll get it um, connected to our news uh, portal that we have. And we're posting article all the articles that are related to MWPAs they come across, right? Uh, yeah, the one, the significant ones. If you, and if you go to the top left of our website where it says news is where we've been putting it. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else questions for Mark? <clears throat> Mark, I was going to suggest maybe Megan can talk with County Council about our our lease and see if we could be reimbursed for costs, because I do know large meeting spaces are at a premium, especially if you have the hybrid and new technology in place, and yeah. maybe some of those costs we could actually be reimbursed for, um, and that would might make our uh, room more available too to other people. So. That would be fantastic. Thank you. We'll get Megan. I see her writing notes. Yeah. Any other questions of uh, Mark? Okay. Seeing that, we're going to go on to public comment on this item. Martina, please. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the executive officer's report, please raise your hand in the reactions. If you're joining us by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand and start six to unmute yourself. So, I see Mark, Mark White is in the waiting room. Oh. He just, I just moved him over. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, we do not have any public comments, sir. Thank you, Martina. Welcome, Mark, to the meeting. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to item six now, which is a consent calendar. The opportunity for public comment on the consent, consent calendar will occur prior to the board's discussion of the consent calendar. The board may approve the entire consent calendar, or any board member or staff member can request an item be removed for separate discussion and vote. So I'll now take uh, public, well, actually, before I take public comment on this item, I was wondering if Mark and or Megan could just briefly tell us what changed in item 6D and 6F in case the public didn't know about that uh, amendment, amended item. And, and Megan will address that. Thank you. Yes, I'm happy to. So um, we didn't amend the action that the board will be taking or anything along those lines. We just put um, an amended version of each of the policies that was attached to both of those items. So. Um, 6D is the executive offer, officer compensation um, plan and policy that um, we made some changes actually based on some helpful um, comments from, um, from Director Kohler regarding um, something that we'd spoken about but hadn't been stated explicitly in the um, plan and policy, which was just that the full board will have an opportunity to provide their input to the evaluation each year, and then that will, input will go to the executive committee. So um, just wanted to be explicit about that, which um, I think was Mark's understanding of the policy as well as the board's, but we just, um, it helped um, just spell it out, we thought. So that's the only change there, other than what was discussed at the last meeting when the um, policy was originally adopted on, as part of a resolution um, in its amended form. So this is the, the um, amended attachment to that resolution. And um, the other change was the executive, or I'm sorry, the employee compensation plan and policy that's um, at item 6F. And that was, um, we got some late changes from um, Sam Zettler, who's our employment counsel, um, just to suggest taking some of the wording and making it clear that it wouldn't impact the, um, uh, it would allow for the board to have discretion and for, for um, the executive committee to have more discretion over the decisions about 
um, that were part of that policy, just be very explicit that it, it didn't change the at will nature of the employment and that type of thing. But the substance of um, the policy itself didn't change beyond those, those uh, sort of minor changes, but we just got them later than expected. So wanted to get those before you before it was adopted. Thank you, Megan. So now we'll go to the public for comment on the consent calendar. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the consent item of the agenda, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand joining by phone and then star six to unmute yourself. And sir, we do not have any public comments. Thank you. So I'm gonna bring it back to the board about pulling an item or perhaps even an additional question to Megan at this point regarding those two items. Okay, seeing no one raising their hand, could we have a motion to approve the consent calendar then? Motion to approve consent calendar, please. Second. Okay, been moved by Goyne, second by Kirsch to approve the consent calendar in its entirety. Roll call, please. Certainly, and that starting off with Director Molesworth from Bellinas, she is not in our meeting today. Director Paulson. Aye. Director Burke. And it looks like Director Burke has not joined just as of yet. Director Kurtz. Aye. Director Donahue. Aye. Director Evergettis. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Director Jeschke. Aye. Director Going. Aye. Director Finn. Aye. Director Hilliard. Does not look like she's made it just yet. Director White. Aye. Director Ravasio. Aye. Director Kohler. Aye. Director Berto. Aye. Director McMillan. Aye. President Rodoni. Aye. Thank you very much. It looks like that carries. So we're going to move on to the staff report. So now item seven, seven A is the financial report for NWPA. Alyssa? And Alisa is not available today due to an illness in the family that she's taking care of. So I will deliver this report in her place. Um, as her staff report mentioned, um, we're a third of the year through the fiscal year, or a third of the way through the fiscal year, which actually kind of seems surprising. Um, we are, um, we're enjoying a really good pace, I feel, with our core projects. Um, and getting those implemented and completed on the ground. And then when it comes to our administrative budgets, we are uh, um, actually a little bit, uh, about 21% of our um, um, administrative budget has been expended through 33% of the year. So we're, we're running pretty well through that. Um, you may have noticed a couple items where we were almost, that we were either at 100% expenditures or close to 100%. And those are for expenses that are a one-time subscription cost or a one-time, we only get billed for that once and we've paid that out. So we don't ex expe expect any more expenditures against that item. And with that, I'll take any questions. Questions about the finance report, Mark? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to public comment on this item, please. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak <clears throat> on the finance item, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand if you're joining by phone. You would then press star six to unmute yourself and speak. And sir, we do not have any public comments. Thank you. So bringing it back to the board for any further discussion, there's no action required on this item. All right, we'll move on to 7B then, which is the work plan update. And Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Martina, would you mind allowing me to share my screen? Thank you so much. Okay, is everyone able to see the slide? Yeah. Great. Um, we have a lot going on. Um, so let me give you a few updates. Um, first of all, we're really getting moving in West Marin. As, in Mark, as Mark mentioned, we were mentioned in the point race light, which was great. Uh, big kudos to uh, Sam, who was the uh, reporter there and did a great job with a very complicated topic. Um, so one of the projects that's getting going is the evacuation corridor project along Highway 1 in the near beach area. 
So we've got uh, some contracting underway. We're um, communicating a lot with national park staff to make sure that we're aware of you know, any kind of concerns and best management practices and all of that on their part. And we will be starting that work really soon. So that's exciting. And a big thank you to Grizzly Corps fellows who are going to help with the before and after photos with that project. We also have um, the Stinson Beach Fuel Break Project. Another thank you to one of our Grizzly Corps fellows, um, Andreas Kalinas, who is helping with the CEQA piece of that. So we've got the NEPA piece, the federal piece, all done. And then on our part, we just file a notice of exemption. And um, it's a great uh, training opportunity for a Grizzly Corps fellow. So she is working on that and we'll be filing that very soon. And then we did get underway for the West Marin Evacuation Route Project. And this is a photo of the training in the field that took place this week with all of our projects, all of our core projects. We've trained the crews in the field, make sure that they're aware of any potential for any kind of resources in the area. And for this project in particular, since it's in the coastal zone, we've got a permit. Um, the biologists went out and um, surveyed the area ahead of time, flagged any manzanita to avoid, flagged riparian areas to avoid, things like that. Wanted to go through and make sure that everything was crystal clear for the contractor. It's a local contractor out of Woodacre. There are contractors in the area that are not ours. So I wanted to uh, mention that PGE seems to be working in the area and um, maybe you know, working even in areas that overlap our project. And uh, so they may be even, you know, taking large limbs or removing mature trees. If that takes place, that is not our project. We are not removing mature trees as part of that project. We, um, you may have noticed in the agenda, we do have another project moving forward and the environmental compliance is done. And that's to add a few miles to uh, San Rafael's evacuation route vegetation management project. Really, it's to give them some flexibility to address issues as they come up or get reported through inspections or by residents. We held a public meeting for the Greater Nevada State of Fuel Break on November 9th, 6 to 8 p.m. This was a remote meeting. And uh, we sent out over 5,000 postcards to residents, all the residents uh, within 300 feet of the project area. Around 60 or 70 folks attended. It was an hour long overview of the project plus breakout rooms where we talked about details for environmental compliance, natural resources, modeling, et cetera. So thank you for all of you who attended. Uh, we received a lot of support from residents during that meeting answered a lot of questions and are in the midst of posting all those materials to the project webpage. So we've got the uh, slides from the presentation posted and various materials posted and we will have the video posted soon. We've also been hosting field trips. We just hosted a field trip in Nevada for the Valley Memorial Eucalyptus Removal Project. That was well attended as well. I had about 45 folks attend including neighbors who were very supported and supportive and uh, led a round of applause. And uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife who attended as well. And it was great to chat with them and they're very pleased with the project. Um, we talked about uh, the eucalyptus removals. We talked about what plants, native plants were going to be installed and also future maintenance. And the landowner here is really excited about the project and is diving into uh, a lot of commitments for future maintenance of this area. We're hosting another field trip, this time in the Southern Marin Zone. Um, that'll be the Tan Valley Homestead Fuel Break, and that's a project that uh, the board considered a couple of months ago. And that's also one of the projects that included uh, National Park Service as a federal partner. So just to sum up and give you some more numbers, um, since July of this year, 767 grant applications have either been initiated, submitted, or awarded. Since July, we've given out well over 415, probably more like $430,000 in grants to residents. We've also done uh, over 2,500 pickups as of late October and have extended the TIPR program into November with no additional cost beyond the program budget. So 
we're looking at over 560 miles of roadside evacuation route work that's been approved through our CEQA process and over 2,853 uh, acres of shaded fuel breaks, prescribed a river, et cetera, still holding at 12 miles of fire roads. So that's where we are and I'll take any questions. Thank you, Ann. Really good report. Questions of Ann. If I may, Ann, could you real quick, I'm sorry, uh, Julie, but if Ann, if you could also discuss uh, the steps that you've already taken to start next year's planning process, please. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Um, the advisory technical committee and the operations committee will start meeting in December. Uh, the ATC will start meeting on December 7th. About the first Wednesday of each month, the operations committee will start meeting the second Wednesday of each month, so about the 14th. And um, even now, we're working to fine tune the web portal to make sure that that's really ready to go. Um, it'll be an easier, shorter process to submit your proposals this year. We're working with uh, the web developers to uh, look at additional opportunities to you know, either incorporate Murray map or some other kind of more advanced kind of mapping uh, element to the proposal um, process. And I'm um, starting to reach out to member agencies to make sure they're all aware of uh, internal planning deadlines for Marin County parks and open space, state parks and national parks. Because if we want our projects to be considered in their future work plans and budgets, we need to be communicating now. So we're working a lot to make sure that those conversations are happening, even for just maintenance of existing projects, things like that, that should just be on everyone's radar. And then also just asking if members of those, you know, land stewardship agencies, uh, near water included, have any ideas of their own that they'd like to collaborate on. So those all are happening right now and we'll see where it goes for next year. Anything else, Mark? Oh, okay, so we're going to go to Julie. Just welcome, welcome to Catherine Hillier who joined us. So thank you, Catherine. Go ahead, Julie. Thank you, Dennis. And just wondering what the date is for the Southern Marin Tam Valley Homestead Fuel Break field trip. We're working on finalizing that date now. We think early December. We want to get the holiday season, but um, would love to try to squeeze it in before the end of the year. Uh, we're working with Jesse Fagoni with Southern Marine Corps. Great. And I was at the field trip earlier this week with the eucalyptus, and that, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for putting that on. Thank you for Bruce. Uh, I'm going to echo what, what Julie just stated about the field trip um, earlier this week. I want to commend uh, Ann Kreelock, who, who kicked the meeting off and just gave a just a really clear um, explanation of of who we are and what we're doing, why we're doing it. Mark Brown, also Mark, thank you. You, you two just really did a, just a superbly, you know, clearly communicated and organized meeting. And then last week, the two hour evening meeting from six to eight on the shaded field break. Similarly, both Mark and Ann, we are, we are gifted to have both of you uh, on our team. And I'm just really proud of, of the work that you did. And I, I've received nothing but compliments. So thank you so much, you guys, you guys, you guys rock. Thanks, Bruce. Catherine Hillier. I just wanted to say that if you want to see the before and after pictures of what's been going on in Southern Marin Territory and Southern Marin, if you go to the smfd.org website and go to the last meeting packet, um, which was yesterday, and then in there, there's a prevention section, and it really has the before and after pictures of probably the places that you'll see, just for your information. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions of Ann? All right, let's go to public comment then, please. If there are any members of the public wishing to comment or regarding the work plan, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand if you're joining us by phone. And sir, we do not have any public comments. Thank you, just gonna bring it back to the board for any further discussion. No action is required on this item. All right, let's move to 7C, draft strategic plan and next steps. Mark? 
Now, it would not be a meeting if someone forgot to unmute themselves. So I did that for you all. Um, uh, so uh, it's pretty exciting to be able to bring this to us. And we've been we've had this um, in queue for a little while. We were just waiting for the right meeting to bring it forward. And one of the things is that sometimes strategic planning is difficult to see unless you're intimately involved in that strategic planning. And so staff has been working hard behind the scenes, but we wanted to let you all know what's going on and where we intend to go and what path we're going to take to get there. And uh, for those of you who read between the lines in the staff report, you probably saw some of Charlotte Jordan's um, handwriting in there. And she is also available here if we have any questions for her. Um, you know, and this is the first time that we've really put all of the work that your board has completed up to this point. And that is uh, our mission and vision, our values and goal statements, and our objectives. Those are all items that have been um, already approved by your board. And so this is just a representation of them being packaged all together in one document. Now we need to start working on our measures of success that are connected to all of our objectives. And we are really trying to take a thoughtful approach on this. You know, there's a lot of outputs um, that we could put in there. And we've been giving you those outputs. We've been he's telling you how many miles that we're working on, how many defensible space inspections we've completed. But how, how has that really changed the wildfire risk in Marin? So that's what we've really been working hard is to quantify that risk reduction. One of the ones is that, we, that we're working on is in con, uh, connection to the Community Wildfire Protection Plan or CWPP's partial level analysis. And um, we want to be able to update that on a frequent basis so that we can know that our work is making a difference. And so we are working with Willow Labs, Sonoma Technology, and Fireside with that. Um, and that'll cover our goals one, three, and five, which is vegetation management, grants, defensible space, and home hardening. We'll be able to use that baseline data plus what we're learning. And to give you an example is we're quantifying what creates structure ignitions. And then we're comparing that to the work that we are that our homeowners are doing to decrease that structure ignition risk. So we'll be able to put a value to that. And once we understand that value, we'll be able to create a measure of success. Then with, with our evacuation route clearing or our shaded fuel break work, we're quantifying what the, the fire line intensity would have been, the rate of spread would have been before our work, and then compare that to the work that we are doing and see the decrease in fire line intensities, the decrease in um, um, rates of spread. The, the, what we would really love to do is find out the decrease in spotting potential, but that is one of, that is like the, the, a unicorn right now across all of the fire services trying to figure out spotting potential. Then we have our recent Fire Safe Marine survey that you received uh, last month, and we also are embarking upon our Knowledge and Attitude survey, and that's going to help us with our public outreach and education. And then our EVAC Ingress Egress Risk Assessment is moving along. Um, all of these projects I've mentioned are on time and on budget, uh, and we are um, really happy with the literature review we just received from the um, EVAC Ingress Egress Risk Assessment. It is on our news section of our website. If you haven't had a chance to read that document, it's fantastic. Uh, we are working on consolidated, consistent speaking points in regard to what we learned through that um, literature review so that all of our member agencies can be saying the same thing about those lessons learned. But um, the EVAC Ingress Egress Risk Assessment will help with our detection alerts and notifications. So the next steps is um, MWPA staff led by Charlotte will um, start determining those measures of success for each of the outcomes. Uh, we'll look at the risk reduction modeling efforts and impacts of completed and proposed projects. We'll identify the resources needed to um, achieve these measures of success. And then in order to create our objectives, as you may remember, we had a task force of members from the operations committee, advisory technical committee led by staff to come up with the objectives. When it's time, we'll reconvene that group to work on the measures of success. For the most part, we feel like we have the resources within the MWPA um, and our member agencies to achieve these goals, except with the exception of one key um, uh, skill set, and that's a GIS consultant. So we are drafting a request for proposals to bring a GIS consultant on board. 
the GIS capabilities that we have within our member agencies, um, the ones that do have that capability, they're pretty much tapped out with all the other work. And, and as you can imagine, the type of data that we're um, digesting is very much map oriented. So a geographical information systems expert is exactly what we're looking for. And this GIS specialist would not just be a person doing the actual work, but it's also the person that's organizing all of our data and making the connections to all the places our data need to go. Um, our data is so interconnected with so many other people. We need someone that can make sure that we are using consistent data all the way across. And I'll give you one quick example. We, this would be the type of person that would make sure that we are using the exact same weather criteria for the modeling in our evacuation ingress egress risk assessment as we are for the modeling with Willow Labs STI so that we have apples to apples and oranges to oranges comparisons. And with that, I'll ask Charlotte if she has anything to add. Thank you. Good afternoon, board members. Um, I just no, I have nothing to add, um, only that um, it's important and we will keep in mind that particularly for um, outcome and output measures, we do not spin our wheels measuring all sorts of things and as much as possible reuse what the agencies are already measuring because there's a lot there and we, we can work with a lot of the existing um, things that are being um, itemized and inventoried and and, uh, and measured as part of these projects. Um, and I think you, you touched on that, but um, just wanted to emphasize again that it's, it's critical that we um, are 100% solid on the models that we use across these impact measures, and that we make sure that not only they're, you know, science and data driven, obviously, but that we use the same type of, say, weather scenarios or vegetation models for the on private parcels risk assessments um, related to our inspection program with the open space uh, vegetation projects and um, also the evacuation projects. So that, that is also what is um, a, a big part of the work here. And I'll answer any questions. All right. Thanks, Charlotte. Thank Mark. Questions? Catherine? Well, this was a more of a compliment. On page 11 of our packet, you have four bullet points that say what you're going to do. So my question is, is this a comparison of targets um, with outcomes? Is that what we're doing now? Targets with outcomes or and theory versus reality? <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um, so I want to clarify the idea of targets because it gets it gets uh, that word gets used a lot. So it's important that we first establish what it is we want to measure. And we don't have, a, the target is a level of that measure. So let's say we want to measure, you know, uh, vegetation removal. We want to reach a certain level of vegetation removal that we know from uh, our modeling and science is, you know, the right balance and is going to be appropriate for risk reduction we're looking for. The target is something that you as a board can set as a policy um, level. <laughs> We are proposing what the measures should be, measures of output, outcome, and impact. We will come back to you to set what the targets are. It's important to keep in mind that as a new organization, we actually don't know much about the, the current baseline levels. So setting targets at this point in the conversation is not, uh, in my view, not so helpful. Um, we, we need to first look at what we're, levels we are at, benchmark levels, identify what it is important to measure, and then we can have the discussion of, okay, we want to reach this goal, this target level on that particular measure. So that's how I see the this process going. But yeah, that's a very good question. And then you had a second question about the reality versus um, the models. Is that right? Yeah, well, I was thinking that from 2020, I mean, 2020, we've been collecting data from our member agencies, um, probably not as intensely as you're doing it now. But this, as you said, is a baseline. So are we, you just answered my question, is there, is, are we at a point now where we can actually check the theory of what we're supposed to, to do under Measure C versus the realities that we may have discovered we can't reach, or we have to do a different approach to it? That was my idea. I, I my question, can we? 
I think we're getting closer to that. Um, it depends on which which area your which goal you're you're you know wanting to discuss. For example, on the attitudes and knowledge survey, I mean, we are only we will only be getting benchmark data, very first sort of initial level of understanding. Uh, we probably have a little bit of it with the uh, the recent Fire Safe Marin survey, but you know, it's it's this effort is all new. Uh, on some other uh, some other goals and efforts, we're using um, the lidar data collected by the uh, uh, one tem um, conservancy. So that doesn't get you know this data doesn't get collected every month, right? So we're a little bit, but this is this is all the time like that when we're trying to do modeling and and science. We're always a tribute to the data that we can collect, and we just have to work around and work with that. Bruce, go ahead. Oh, do you call on me, Dennis? Yes, yes. go ahead, Bruce. Sorry. Okay, for I want to, Charlotte, Mark, I want to thank you for uh, framing up this discussion of of the outcomes question and how how we how we approach it. Um, my my compliments to you. It's exactly what I had envisioned. Uh, we do, as Mark said, we do have the CWPP where every single partial has been an, analyzed as far as its its uh, its fire hazard. Um, so, you know, that is certainly baseline, as Mark said, the methodology to get there, I, and I participated in some of that is I sat in rooms where, where it's actually been crafted, and there's not a lot of peer reviewed science around about that exact approach. So we can recognize that, but we're in the right quadrant with that. Okay, but so what what I what has not been mentioned, I think is going to be really important is, I understand we're going to hire some staff, and we're going to have contract, um, some contract work, uh, this is going to cost money. Uh, so what I think needs a little investigation is what, when do we want to crank the analysis? When do we want to push the start button on doing the GIS analysis? Is it year three, year, uh, year three, year uh, six, year nine, um, or is it going to be annual? Uh, is it part of our regular reporting? Um, I, I think critical here is you know, communicating to the public that of the effect that we're having, not just spending their money and doing projects, but so you know, Mark and, and Charlotte and team thinking of, um, you know, is this going to be an annual assessment or is it going to be, you know, we, we need some time to get some work done so that we can actually show some results. So if you would please think about the temporal component and and the justification for the for the for the intervals at which you are going to crank and push the start button on this analysis and publish the data and get it out. So anyway, compliments, compliments, compliments. But let's let's be thoughtful as far as the you know, the, the timing of this, and the amount of money it costs us. Understood. And and I'll just say that as far as a GIS consultant, the need of the need for that position is pre present now and helping to scope our projects and the need for data collection through that is now. And I think the temporal aspect of, of, of the return frequency for an analysis will come out through our work um, that we are embarking upon now. Is it annual, is it biannual? So um, that, that's forthcoming. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can maybe give a little bit of detail. So on the, uh, on the vegetation management projects, uh, we're working with Willow Labs, we're looking at examining the risk reduction uh, before and after, you know, at the time of completion, and then we're asking them to include measures of uh, maintenance of the work at three years, five years, and 10 years. The idea being that over time, uh, MWPA as a, an organization, you know, at, at the beginning of the life cycle, you'll, you'll probably invest in a lot of new projects, but then over time, uh, you want to be I think uh, want to be devoting most of your budget to maintenance, um, and so you know we we that's an argument that needs to be made. I think very strongly is that there is an initial investment going out here to do all this work, but it needs to be maintained. Otherwise, it's wasted. So um, that is a little bit how we see this this going. Julie, yeah, just to follow up on Bruce's comment, I'm. Um... I'm hoping as you all are doing all this work, you're keeping in the back of the of your minds, how are we going to explain this work to the public and why is it necessary and why is it meaningful and why is it a good use of taxpayer dollars to do this? Um, and I'm also wondering if this all of this work will help us better 
make decisions and prioritize work, other work that needs to be done. Um, Cause that's a big component as well. Thank you. Great, great observation as far as um, how we describe to uh, the public and visually is one of the best ways. And then, and, and be able to talk about um, even if it's vague numbers, fire line intensity and telling people, you know, giving them some type of comparison is that um, is awesome as well. And then, um, oh my, I just spaced on the last, on your second piece, Julie, I'm sorry. Is, it, is the work going to better inform our priorities going forward? It, it, it for sure will. And then what I'm really excited about is for us to find the components of our work that is, is, is the most successful and compare it to the components of our work that have not created the results that we want. And so we can fine tune those ones that have not been creating the results we want. I get, I, I just took another question. I'm, I'll, it's more of a comment, so maybe I should wait. Sure. I'll wait. <laughs> Catherine Donahue. Yes, thank you. Am I on? Okay, good. Thank you for the report, Charlotte. I really appreciated it. And I'm going to kind of echo what others have said. Um, I'm really appreciative of science and experts but it really needs to drill down to our constituents that depend on us. And, you know, we had a point raised light article and everything, which is great because I'm from Inverness and I've got my colleagues here from, from West Moran, our supervisor. Um, but the public needs to know what the findings are. <laughs> and what it means for us and how much money that's gonna cost. I mean, we can have a broadband assessment on something and then it could just be up there in the cloud. But on the other hand, we need to know how we're going to put it to fruition. Thank you. Yeah, and if, if I can just add something to that, maybe it helps to think of it as, um, you know, until now we've, so we're doing essentially a dual approach, mixing the um, expertise and knowledge of the people on the field with what science is telling us. So we're, we're taking these two approaches together and together they inform how, our, how we prioritize our projects and our dollars. That's essentially the exercise of this risk assessment and metrics um, piece of work here. If you want to think of it, of it that way, so yeah. it's not it's not a project in and of itself. It's a tool to help us prioritize the projects that we think we want to be doing. Thank you. Yep, very good. Other questions, Charlotte or Mark? All right, we'll go to Dave? public comment now. Oh, okay. sorry, Bruce, you had your hand up again. Yeah. Yes. Real quick, okay. um, I, I appreciated Charlotte uh, the mention of targets. Um, in in this package, and Mark, you're mentioning the um, that you know this is some work that the board is going to have to do. I uh, last month when we talked about this, we did I did ask the question about the role. You know, we did have this ad hoc uh, strategic planning committee um, that that um, helped kind of build the framework uh, for the strategic plan and you know vision, mission, goals, and objectives. Um, the, the question being, and just something to think about, um, if you'd like to. Um, you know, re-invite uh, and, and, and new members, of course, into that ad hoc group to engage with Charlotte and team and you, Mark, uh, to, to talk about targets uh, so that we don't have to bring it, you know, we can bring a, a fairly well thought out package of targets to the executive committee and then the full board. So I'm just suggesting we, you know, consider just uh, con you know, stating that that we'll, we, we intend to use um, that process, which we used previously over a year and a half ago that was very successful. Yeah, thank you for reminding me about that, because that was a great conversation during the executive committee when we talked about this. And uh, yes, we do want to tap into that. We have some tremendous talent on the board. And as we talked in the executive committee, it also helps to diverse to get some of our board members and, you know, get involved in different subcommittees. Thank you, Bruce. OK, now we'll go to public comment on this item. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the current item, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand if you're joining us by phone, star six to speak once you have joined or 
been called upon and it does not look like we have any hands for public comment sir thank you so we'll bring it back to the board for discussion there's no action required on this so i'm going to go to julie did you want to make a comment julie yeah and then gabe keeps raising his hand oh i'm sorry <laughs> um I, I just in thinking about how to present this, um, it's pretty complicated. And I'm thinking that we need like a regular report for the board and the strategic planning committee and, you know, ATC ops, all those people. And then we need kind of a very high level um, version for the public that explains in very plain language what we're doing, why we're doing it, what the results are just basic, basic stuff so that it's easily understandable and it makes sense. That's my comment. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. And so Gabe, did you have a comment? I did see your hand up at one point and you've actually yeah. been bouncing around my screen. <clears throat> so it's been hard to find you. I know. Yeah, sorry. I, I'm in the hinterlands of downtown Corte Madera. So my connection. <laughs> um, yeah, just, I, I first wanted to thank the, the team, you know, being on the strategic ad hoc, I thought the 17 page report was so well put together, you know, just clear. Um, on the metrics, I, I hope we do revisit that at the board level. A few things came up. One is you know, we spoke earlier about insurance benefits for the public. I think that's both what Julie is saying, a great selling point, and it might be a helpful metric. Also, this idea of regrowth of vegetation. So, you know, as we clear 87 miles, you know, I think one metric would be, you know, either by drone or something like that. That will help us understand the, you know, future maintenance cost. And then environmental, too. you know, obviously we've had good partnerships, environmentally sound practices, but to just make sure that we put that into the uh, packet. And I think we could do a fairly simple summary for the public and, you know, keep that also in our press credits for the IJ and others. Thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Any other board members? Yeah, Julie, go ahead. Sorry, just one other thought. You know, a lot of the work that's being done is to eliminate invasives and to rejuvenate these areas with native plants. So I'm not sure that you all are thinking about um, tracking that, but th that's really important to a lot of people. So I would include that. Thank you, Julie. Any other comments? Okay. So there's no action on this item. We're gonna to move to now to item eight, which is the action item of today. Timeline for in-person meetings, Mark Brown. Yeah, and, and you notice it's timeline for in-person meetings and not a timeline to return to in-person meetings since the MWPA is a, a post-COVID baby, and uh, we've actually never had one of our public meetings in person. So um, when through this entire um, history of the MWPA, we've had some type of state of emergency, uh, um, a temporary ad amendment to the Brown Act um, in the form of right now, Assembly Bill 361. But um, as you all know, the governor has stated that the state of emergency will end at the end of February. And that's when Assembly Bill 2449 will come into play. And um, I think you all know it pretty well, and I won't bore you with it too much, uh, but 2449 kind of makes it easier to attend meetings remotely, but it really doesn't. And it, um, it, and we borrowed um, Novato Fires table that they created. Um, Megan was able to connect with Riley, their counsel, to create the table of the differences of AB 361 to 2449. And that was what was amended um, last night, is adding that table to this discussion. Um, I did want to talk about our, our chamber's development. And thank you for Community, Medicine, Community <laughs> Media Center of Marin or Marin TV. They have been doing phenomenal work. Uh, they've been in there just wrapping it up now. And we are setting up the space to be hybrid for um, our board meetings and all of our Brown Act committees. But we're also setting it up to be hybrid for all of our classrooms um, so that we can use that space as a classroom. We can record the classes. We could have students attend remotely. So we're pretty excited about those chambers. 
and we are, it's just about done, like I said, and we are identifying our December board meeting as our first hybrid meeting for the MWPA board of directors. We are going to have some opportunities to dry run the technology before that. We have our evac ingress, egress risk assessment, technical advisory team, long, that's a mouthful, uh, meeting coming up that's going to be hybrid. Um, advisory technical committee, operations committee will both meet prior to our board meeting. We are recommending that staff is present at the in the chambers for those so we can um, dry run the that the, the, the technology. And when we also have our finance committee on December 5th that I'm going to recommend that we either do hybrid or staff is present and we experiment with the hybrid. As you saw, we have three options to provide you. Option one would be after the December 15th, um, 17th meeting, we continue to utilize Assembly Bill 361 with hybrid meetings, encouraging um, our members, whether they're board members, ops, ATC, COC, to attend in person, but still they don't have to. It's based on 361. Option two would be to um, return to full remote meetings following um, our December meeting. And an option three is just to enact the uh, and go to into full in-person meetings following Assembly Bill 2449 standards. We would be doing that about three months early. And staff's recommendation, and um, as is the executive committee's recommendation, is to go with option one. Thank you, Mark. So questions of board members now. Directors. Yes, Julie. I mean, Rachel, sorry. Thanks. Um, I just want to clarify when we say hybrid, just from the community's perspective, that um, people can participate in terms of asking questions and commenting still, that it's not just visible um, in terms of watching. Thank you. And the, the, the hybrid portion more of it is really more focused towards the public than it is the members of the board, right? You have to have some pretty specific reasons for one of our committee or board members to not be present for the meeting, whereas the hybrid accessibility really is for um, the members of the public, and it, it, it does need to be visual. They need to be able to see the, the, the board members, and also for any board members who are remote, they have to be able to see them. I would say this is definitely one of those silver linings from COVID, a conversation we've never had to have had before, um, but I think it's providing these meetings to be much more accessible to everybody. Agreed. Yep. Thank you, Rachel. Other questions from board members? All right. Um, so now we're going to go to the public for comment on this item, and then we'll bring it back to the board for further discussion and action. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the timeline to return to in-person meetings, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining us by phone to raise your hand and then start six to speak. And sir, we do not have any hands for public comment. Thank you, Martina. So bringing it back to board for further discussion and or a motion, Barbara. I'd like to make a motion. Um, if that's, if that's yeah, all right. Go ahead. That's I'd right. like to make a motion to support option one as recommended by the executive committee and staff. I'll Thank second. you. Second. So it's motion by Kohler, second by McMillan. Any further comments by directors? All right. Roll call, please. Absolutely. Can And we'll start off again by announcing that Director Mulgrave is not present for today's meeting. Uh, Director Paulson. I see. Director Burke. Not present. Uh, Director Kurtz? Aye. Director Donahue? Aye. Director Evergettis? Aye. Director Shea? Aye. Director Dreschke? Aye. Director Goins? Aye. Director Finn? Aye. Director Hilliard? Aye. Director White? Aye. Director Ravasio? Aye. Director Kohler? Aye. Director Berto? I heard us. I was going to say, I think yeah. I heard him. <laughs> um, Director McMillan. Aye. And President Rodoni. Aye. Thank you all. So that, that action carries. So now we'll move to item nine, committee reports. First report is Fire Safe Marin. 
And just to let everyone know, um, sorry, Meg McCabe in our audience is currently promoting over to panelists so that they can give the Fire Safe Marin report. Thank you. And welcome to the meeting, Meg McCabe. You are now free to speak on behalf of Fire Safe Marin. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. Thank you very much. Um, I will make this quick this, e uh, this afternoon because Fire Safe Marin is chugging right along on all of the projects that we report on each month. So I'll just give you an update as we go along. Um, at the top of the list is our Adapt to Wildfire campaign, um, which uh, we have just switched out to our fourth round of uh, ads now working uh, featuring home hardening and uh, many of you may have seen them in the IJ and um, uh, continue on YouTube and streaming and uh, each month we are now reaching uh, 2.5 million impressions um, targeted to uh, uh, homeowners in high risk areas, primarily the WUI areas. Uh, we are able to do this through our ad buys that um, are, uh, it's called list and dynamic pricing. So we actually foul individuals rather than um, actually purchase uh, ads on any platform. We we select the, the type of individual we wanna follow around. And then we, we try to, uh, our saturation point is reaching each of these, uh, a certain target number of these individuals uh, five or more times, and then we switch out the ads to the next ones. So that is moving along really well. And uh, education uh, programs in the schools and um, our FireWise uh, uh, program is, uh, we have our meeting tomorrow uh, with the leaders and it continues to have uh, high attendance. And um, Josh Hampshire is now our FireWise liaison and is working um, on uh, helping all through all the renewal process, which is a little bit of a, a bureaucratic hassle, but um, he's we're trying to simplify that as much as possible. Um, and our big news is Ember Stomp is um, is well underway. We are uh, we have a site visit tomorrow out um, at the Civic Center Fairgrounds, and with the um, increased space, we have uh, we have we are really amped up um, all the different uh, areas. Um, this year, we will have four stages: the children's stage, the music stage. Um, a new stage called the New Front, uh, New Frontiers in Wildfire Management, which we will be featuring um, new technologies uh, in fire science. We'll be, uh, it'll be a venue that um, some of our vendors who have different kinds of new technology products will be able to um, uh, showcase what those are all about. And then we will um, also invite ecologically sound practices and um, uh, and Bonnie Bees to talk about um, uh, the biodiversity uh, lens of wildfire management to really give audiences a sense of the broad spectrum of which this work is all being um, looked at and, and um, really the, uh, the continual advancements in all of these areas. So that's kind of an exciting uh, uh, aspect to this. We'll also have, as I think many we've said before, but we are going to be having live burn demonstrations. Um, so yes, we really have, we have a huge area out there so we can do that safely. And we will be having um, an art exhibit that um, the Marin Cultural Center has, uh, is partnering with us to, uh, we're putting out a call for art next month and the art will be shown, um, will be juried by local uh, gallery owners and then the after the festival, the uh, it will all be showcased in the Marin Civic Center main gallery. So I we are really hopeful that we're going to get very high caliber art for this. And along with all of the art, each artist will be making a statement about how this uh, how their work represents um, some aspect of adapting to wildfire. Um, and we're also going to be having a 
expanded demo garden, which Yard Zen, which is, I don't know if many of you are familiar with it, but they're a, uh, a design firm that really focuses on the, uh, their aesthetic is, uh, in their name, uh, Yard Zen, is by nature uh, uh, firewise. They're, they have a lot of uh, emphasis on simplicity, on, on sculpture of gardens rather than um, sort of the more traditional English um, English garden uh, fullness that we're so used to around Marin. So we have uh, a pretty ambitious uh, uh, plan going on with them that we're gonna have uh, four 30 by 30 plots to show two different uh, backyards, two different front yards, uh, very different um, looks and feels of, uh, of what the possibilities are of um, uh, fire smart design. So that's an exciting one. And we have, we're gonna be having barbecue and um, we're looking into serving beer, what the complexities of that are, but um, I, I think that's gonna be a manageable addition. And we'll have the main stage for four bands as well. And we may even have a New Orleans line band that's gonna go around kind of keeping the festivities up um, in um, at periodic times throughout the uh, thing. So that is uh, really exciting. And we are doing very well in fundraising. And uh, we're extremely pleased and grateful to um, announce that uh, we were uh, awarded $9,000 from the County of Marin. So uh, that is just a real vote of priority for our whole county. And we're really proud of that and, uh, and pleased with um, where things are going. So I'm happy to take questions on anything that uh, we are up to. Thank you, Meg. Questions of Fire Safe Marine Report. Julie. Thanks, Meg. It sounds great. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, is, is this a free, is Ember Stomp a free event? It is. Great, thank you. May 20th. Oh, great. Thank you for that. That was my question. Thanks. Other question. All right, let's go to the public. I know we have one, one person with their hand up. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand if you're joining us by phone. And beginning with Larry Minigus, we do have one person for public comment. Mr. Minikis, you have now joined the meeting. We'd love to hear your comments, sir. Good afternoon, folks. And I just want to give a, a shout out to Meg and, and the tremendous contribution she's making uh, to the MWPA, to Fire Safe Marin, and to the community, having, having seen a lot of the work that she's doing. And, you know, putting on an event like Ember Stump is a really tough thing. And it by any measure was a success in its first year. And that's really, really incredible. And Meg, I was able to give a shout out just a few minutes ago at the Parks and Open Space Commission meeting. I mentioned Fire Safe Marin and suggesting that the new commissioners go visit. So thank, thank you. And that's my comment for the afternoon. Thank you, Larry. That's you are it. most <laughs> welcome, Meg. <laughs> and it the success of um, Ember Stomp is really a tribute to this whole team effort from everyone in um, Marin, especially everyone in the MWPA, I felt like it was just a huge celebration of community. I mean, the fact that all of our community partners, I mean, so many of you were out there last year and it was, it really was an amazing, not only were we coming out of COVID, so it was for many of us the first time we were ever together in person, but it really was, um, looking at our website come to life. It was like all of the things we ever report on. These are the people, these are the, the things that are behind it. And so I'm really, I'm looking forward to, you know, a, a, even a greater event this year. It's really, it's a, uh, it's an honor to work with everyone. Yep. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Meg. So I'm going to see if there's anyone in the public wants to comment, additional comments. And if there are any additional members of the public wishing to speak on the Fire Safe Marin report, please raise your hand in the comments, or I'm sorry, in the reactions. And if you're joining us by phone, 
please press star nine to raise your hand. And sir, it does not appear that we have any additional hands for public. Okay. Bring it back to the board for any further comments. There's no action on this item. Okay, thank you, Meg. Terrific Thanks. update. Okay, we're gonna to move to item 10, informational items. We have uh, A, B, C, and D. The first three are minutes of meetings. And the third, the fourth rather is D, the vice president listening session. Does anyone have anything, any comments on the first three items, A, B, C, or D, which are minutes of the citizens overkite? And are they here today to present, Mark, or don't think so? Uh, we don't have a presentation for the okay, COC. very good. And then the uh, executive committee members minutes of November 3rd and the finance committee member uh, minutes of October 11th. Seeing no one raising their hand, I'd like to move then to the vice president's listening session and welcome Julie McMillan and thank her for doing this work that she's done. Thank you, Dennis. Um, as most of you know, during October and early November, I got to meet with almost all board of director members as part of my commitment to serve as the board vice president. And I wanna thank Martina for helping me set up all of those meetings. I wanna thank each board member for your generosity in sharing your valuable time and your ideas with me. And it was really wonderful for me to get to meet so many of you finally in person. And I came away from these sessions realizing that the MWPA is extremely fortunate to have such dedicated, committed, and thoughtful directors. A few themes that I wanted to briefly share with you. First, directors are extremely positive about serving on the MWPA board. Everyone seems engaged, they understand their roles, and they're prepared for decisions. They're comfortable contacting the executive officer and staff and appreciate their quick responses. They're pleased with how quickly MWPA has started up during a pandemic and the good results that have already been accomplished. Everyone is also very much looking forward to meeting in person. Um, everyone has enjoyed the Board of Director Education sessions and some have even mentioned that they view those as a perk for serving on the board. And many also enjoy Anne's wonderful field trips. There's widespread praise for Executive Officer Mark Brown, Consultant Jean Bonander, and Program Manager Anne Creelock. A few areas were identified with some suggestions. Um, first and foremost, that the MWPA continuously needs to increase its visibility and promote its accomplishments. The board of directors needs to be thinking constantly about how MWPA can best communicate its achievements to our taxpayers. Fire Safe Marin needs to be used more to increase the MWPA's visibility and MWPA may want to consider preparing brief write-ups for members to include in their monthly newsletters. I have shared most of the board of directors comments with Mark and we have strategized on these themes and others, so stay tuned. And lastly, I just wanted to reiterate my thanks to each of you for sharing your time with me and more importantly, for your dedication and commitment to the MWPA. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. So board member comments or questions of Julie? All right, how about public comment on this item? If there are any members of the public wishing to speak uh, regarding the vice president's listening session, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand if you're joining us by phone. And sir, though it does not appear that we have any public comments, I did see that Director Goins had his hand raised just before we went to public. So I'll come back to uh, directors and ask for comments at the end. So, Bruce. Yeah, I, I just want to thank you, Julie, for uh, your initiative, uh, taking the initiative. No one, no one asked you to do this. Um, I, I think it's just a, 
expression of your, you know, your, 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 lead, your communication style and your leadership style to, to get to know folks and to ask the questions. And I, I want to thank you. You and I spent a, a good deal longer than half an hour, as did some others, I'm sure. And it gave me an opportunity to articulate, you know, a, a number of items that it's difficult to, to, to bring out in, in, in a full board meeting. And I know that, you know, you were taking notes and I know your style of communication, clear and concise and working with Mark, I do look forward to, um, you know, just this is continually, you know, looking at ourselves and who we are, what what needs to be done. Anyway, I thank thank you for taking the time and I can't wait to, you know, you know, the, the tree will continue to blossom. So <laughs> thank you so much. I look forward to, to continued results. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Any other comments? Uh, yeah. Bruce's hand just went up again. No. <laughs> All right. No, no further comments. And just thanks again, Julie. Really well done. And I think just the fact that you got the majority of us together to, to answer your questions is really beneficial. And um, it'd be nice to do this again at some point, maybe in a year or so, just see how things change or not change. So very good. I agree. Thank you. It was it was totally my pleasure. I learned a lot about each and every one of you. Well, almost every one of you. Um, and it was very fun too. So thank you. Yep. Thanks again. All right. Item 10E is our educational item for today, and it is the annual report presentation. So, Mark? Yeah. And uh, first and foremost, um, a very big thank you to the awesome MWPA staff that we've uh, assembled. Uh, your board for all the work that you guys have put in towards this. None of this would have been uh, possible without the board leadership. Um, our ops and our advisory technical committees have just been amazing. And then I say it every year, and I'm going to keep saying it, um, the strength of the MWPA is the strength of our member agencies. And we could not have gotten what we got done, completed, without our member agencies. And before I just do a really, really brief presentation on it, um, I did want to talk about the distribution of how we will get this out. Um, we will for sure push this out in all forms with soft copies, whether it's on our website, links to it to our social media, ask each of our member agencies to share it on our social media. But we will also print out a minimum of two copies per member agency, one for the board member represented for that board uh, member agency, one for whether it's the fire chief or the, the city manager for that agency. And then we will reach out and find out how your partners on your boards and councils would like to receive this. Would it like a soft copy or would they like a hard copy? And then we'll get that out. So um, your partners on your councils and boards can be well informed of what we accomplished this last year. And um, I promise to be brief because I know that you guys, um, if you haven't looked at it already, you are going to look at it in depth. And quick thumbs up that I got it going up properly. I'm, I'm getting there. Um, first and foremost, we had a great letter from President Goins. And we always have to have one little mistake in our in our documents that we share with you to make sure that you have read the document. And oh, I'm sorry. Um, you guys passed the test. It was noticed that we did put the wrong date for the particular board presidency at this time. So uh, we'll get that fixed before we publish it. And um, we wanted to highlight on this page, though, is what our five goal areas are, because that is really what's driving the MWPA is the goals that the board has established. Um, I won't give the rundown on this, but I I, I kind of get tired reading this because so much happened over this last fiscal year. Um, it is a tremendous accomplishment. And you look at it, a lot of this was a lot of work by the board of directors, as well as extensive work by all of our member agencies. Then we have um, um, my letter that we put in there. I wanted to touch on a couple of things. Um, the empowerment piece, getting our residents to learn and accept their responsibility in creating fire adaptive communities. I think we've um, gotten a lot of success in that. The innovation, and I, I want to touch on innovation. A lot of people can connect technology to an innovation, but it's not. To me, innovation is creating solutions to challenges. It may or may not include technology, but um, and I, I look at a lot of the things that we've done. And let's go to the evacuation, ingress, egress, risk assessment as an example of innovation. Yes, it's very technological, but technology is only helping us drive that that solution making. And this is the first thing of its type where we are looking at um, the road network 
fire behavior, the demographics of our community, the communications. To me, that's innovation, bringing that all together, helping us create solutions. Um, the return on investment and in receiving the $3.25 million grant, I think, is just the beginning of our grant acquisitions. We are looking forward to more coming forward. And then I think, you know, trust takes a long time to earn, but I think we are earning the trust that we are doing this with ecological integrity. We, um, I'm not showing a pay, uh, every page, and so I'm not going to be able to hit every one of our zones, but um, our vegetation management for fire reduction has been um, remarkable. I really like the, the picture on the right, the before and after of the house with the grass below it. Um, for those of us that have been in Marin Fire Service long enough, we remember a house that looks almost identical to that on Michelle Circle in Novato. And it was a three acre fire that got to homes faster than the fire engines could. And it, it looked, and those conditions looked very much like the conditions on the left. If that fire had occurred with the conditions on the right, that home would not have been destroyed. And this is the type of um, success that we are achieving. Um, our detection alert and evacuation, the Zone Haven platform is an, an, an important tool. We're continuing to expand the LRAD networks. And then we already talked about the ingress, egress risk assessment and public education. Um, that our outreach is just getting becoming phenomenal. 759,000 touch points um, is huge. And um, just a great partnership with FireSafe Marin. Um, and their website is second to none. We actually were able to, um, one of our DSpace people went to a conference in Detroit to talk about defensible space efforts. They referenced the Fire Safe Marine website at that conference in Detroit as the model to follow. So that, that's fantastic. Um, and then this, I think, when we look back at the end of 10 years of the first round of Measure C, and hopefully we extend that to a next round of Measure C, I think our defensible space valuation program will be recognized as the number one success in our program. Over 33,000 inspections this last year, but I think almost more important is the 4,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one community engagement and that connection of getting the residents to really understand what's going on, what they need to do, what their responsibilities are. And I think that's one of our best public education tools. And then our grant programs um, has really blossomed, as you know, and it's expanding beyond our original expectations. And um, what I'm really looking forward to is some of the planning that we are already putting into next fiscal, fiscal years, specifically following a direct assistance model similar to what you see in this picture in, for, in San Rafael. Rather than residents having to reimburse us for the work they have done, we want to engage into a direct assistance program for certain high-risk items or folks with access and functional needs. But this picture speaks volumes. You have juniper and cypress that's in and around the entire house, up against the house, and it wasn't just a threat to that house it was a threat to the entire neighborhood. So I, I really do feel that through this work, we're making a significant impact. Uh, we talked about at the closeout of our last budget year, um, we had, um, I think, exceeded my personal expectations of our core spending. And this is a great breakdown of core spending based on our, pro, our, our, our um, uh, objectives. And then when we look at how the zones spent, you look at we're pretty consistent with the amount of revenue each area is gaining. We have um, some areas where we can get a little bit more traction and get the work done, but agencies have increased their bandwidth. And then one of the things I also wanted to show is that people look at some of our JPA wide spending and they wonder how it relates to their particular zone. So we were able to break down the JPA wide spending to projects such as Chipper Days and how that broke down to each of the zones and the benefit each zone is receiving from those uh, JPA-wide endeavors. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thanks, Mark. Julie? Um, yeah, Mark, I'm, I'm hoping that each of us can take this annual report and explain it briefly to whatever board or council we sit on. And I'm wondering if um, you or someone on your staff could identify maybe five or six bullet points that you really want us to emphasize 
to make it easy on us, but also to get the consistent message across to the public. Absolutely. We can package that up with um, for the the when we reach out and find out how each of your partners want to receive this information, we can include that, those speaking points for you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Julie. Um, uh, page 22 of the report is a ready made uh, summary uh, that we should take back to all of our agencies. It's nice and tight and predicts the future in a nice uh, wide open way. I really like it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Comments? All right, let's go to the public. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the annual report item, please raise your hand in the reactions and then press star. If you're joining us by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand. And so it does look like we have Mr. Larry Minikis who would like to speak. Mr. Minikis, you have joined the meeting and we. Yeah, I, I was pondering whether or not, but um, because I don't have a question, but I just want to say, I, I really appreciate the excellence of uh, this report and, and um, look forward to really digging into it. And that's, that's all I want to say, appreciate it. It looks great, thank you. And it's going to be, it's going to be really good for the community. Those who are interested, can learn all they need to know about what, what has been going on here. And it's all packaged so well. And we just need more of that in, in Marin and uh, we'll be fine. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Any other public comment, Martina? And if there are any additional members of the public wishing to speak, please go ahead and raise your hand in the reactions or press star, to, star nine to raise your hand if you're joining by phone. And so we do not have any additional public comments at this time. Okay, bring it back to the board, looking for further discussion. No action on this item. Rachel. Um, I love the report. I think it's great. But I think that one of the things, as we're looking at this now, and we're all part of the choir, um, and so, which is great, and we all love it, but we're part of the choir. So when I talk to people who don't necessarily, are not as familiar with MWPA, or fire save. The, the go-to is how, are, you know, I use is all this is about supporting our local fire department. And at the end of the day, because that, that's what the community knows is, well, where does our fire department fit into this picture? And I think that's okay. It's just now a question of, as we're going forward, we want to make sure the community understands the benefit and the value of MWPA for that. So it's not really a, a question. It's more. It's definitely more of a comment that I think we still have work to do, as as Julia was mentioning, with the community because we have so many people who are interested and engaged, but don't necessarily know the difference. I don't know the difference between the, your local fire department to MWPA to Fire Safe Marin or anything else out or Ember Stomp and this and that. They they just don't know. And that's okay, they don't have to know. Um, but I think it does become a challenge, like this report, even giving this report to somebody who's not familiar with what's going on will be difficult. Um, so somehow we need to just boil it down to a couple of sentences about your support, your money is going towards helping X, Y, and Z. So that's, that's sort of my comment, like, this is great, we need to have this level, but this is not gonna be a general, should not be given to the general community. I think we'll get a glaze over. Thank you, Rachel. Barbara? Um, I just wanna uh, sort of uh, pile on to what Rachel said. And I think that the report is excellent, but she is right that if you don't know, you know, if you're not the inside scoop like we are, you might not understand the pieces. So this is um, probably a lot to ask for, but I'm wondering if we could produce something like a fact sheet of four pages that sort of summarizes some of these key points. And I'm not trying to give anybody a new job, like I already made Mark the leasing agent, but um, just something to think about as we try to get our point across really simply, and I think Tom pointing out that page 22 has that summary, um, maybe that's a place to just pull that out 
and develop that into something a little more simple to convey our message. And maybe that's something FireSafe Marin could do. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Mark White. Yeah, I just wanted to say what Julie was saying earlier, the bullet points are what's real important. And uh, if we can get those out to our constituents, I think they'll like that. And what's really unique, I think for me and the people of West Marin also is that we don't have that many constituents. Dennis, you're aware of that in these communities. And so it's easier for us to talk to people. Uh, I see them. I see them on the street when I'm walking. When I'm walking, ride my bike around town. I see the people in town, and they ask me these questions. So I, th I think the bullet points would be very important that we could try and get out to all of our constituents. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, I got one. <laughs> Go ahead, Catherine. You're muted, Catherine. Um, I agree. When I first started with the board, uh, what, three years ago or whatever, I said, communication, communication, communication. And Bruce was part of this, like, communication um, committee with me. And I thought that was so important. Well, you know, San Francisco Ballet has little excerpts that goes into your neighborhood paper and everything. I mean, I don't know how much it would cost to have a real um, little pamphlet in the IJ to just exemplify what we're doing here. It's so important because people don't understand how much we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Steve Berto. Yeah, um, piggybacking on what Catherine said, I was on that committee too. And as you guys know, since, you know, the early days, I've been the one saying, you know, communication is going to be key we're a new agency and one of the things that a lot of public agencies don't do well is communicating to the public and you know to that end i really tip my hat to mark and the staff because i've been really really pleased with the level of communication that we've been able to provide um same thing with rich and fire safe marin i actually i, I think fire safe marin's messaging and just the way they do it is absolutely pitch perfect and on point every time. Um, you know, I'll say, you know, to what Catherine was saying, one of the things that I've really, really been impressed with is the level of, um, you know, outreach to the newspaper, particularly the IJ and the op-eds that are either from Bruce or from Mark or any of the you know, ones that we've submitted. That's something that, you know, I always push with the agencies that I work for. It's something that you typically get a lot of pushback on, you know, oh, we got other things to do or whatever. Really just an, a phenomenal job with communication. And I, it's really a point of pride for me of how MWPA has really gone about how we communicate with the public. Um, there's certainly always more we could do, but I'm, I'm quite satisfied with what we're doing now. So kudos to everybody. Thank you, Steve. Any other comments? So Mark, we can follow up with all these suggestions, see if something will work for us and try and uh, have a plan going forward. Absolutely, I took lots of notes. Very good. All right, so we're moving now on to item 11, which is board member requests for future meetings. Any requests? I see some Bruce. You have your hand up still. Sorry, your hand is right near right near window, so it's hard to see the window behind you. So sorry. Um, gosh, so I, I do have a specific uh, request, and I, I, I spoke about the one TAM, um, the forest health assessment work that's going on, and a report that's due here at the end of December. Um, I've spent quite a bit of time with Danny Franco. Um, I had Danny come and speak to my Rotary. Uh, this week, and uh, he's. I'm going to bring him to another meeting here. But I, I request, because of the direct relationship between the one TAM work, 
Mark mentioned the regional priority plan and uh, our regional forest fire capacity program funding. There's a lot of stuff lining up here um, coming into this brand new uh, calendar year. So I would ask Mark that we invite our team here that we invite uh, Danny Franco from One Tam to come and talk about the 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 preparation, the, the forest health assessment work that they're doing the relationship to uh, our partners work on the ATC and then you know the 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 the, the outcome the potential outcome how it's going to affect us here in coming years i i think it's timely and really really time important to us so that's my request thank you bruce i know yeah we'll follow up on that cuz i know we've talked about that before so mark's taking notes anything mm -hmm. else one quick reminder about next meeting is that, um, again, we, we mentioned this during the meeting, it will be hybrid, but we also will be having an open house for the MWPA offices following the meeting. Um, obviously, all the board members are invited, but we're also going to invite Ops Committee, Advisory Technical, COC, and our partners at the ESP. Um, we'll send out an invite to the Steering Committee for ESP. Thank you, Mark, for that reminder. And I know that um, there's uh, the reorganizations going on in districts and city councils, and I know some of us may or may not be here uh, next month or, or in January, but in particular, I know one person who is leaving his council, Bob Ravazio, and I just wanted to call it out today because I think this is his last meeting. Bob's been instrumental in Central Marin when it comes to safety and fire, and he's been a strong proponent of Measure W or the MWPA. And Measure C. And so I just want to call him out today and thank him. And hopefully we'll get him back maybe in December or January to, to visit with us and maybe um, look at a resolution or something for him. I don't know what the practice is. We're just starting that, but we'll figure that out. But thanks so much, Bob, for your service. Yep. And anyone you, else? Man. Yeah, yeah. And anyone else, uh, we'll certainly catch up with you if there's a shift going on and and figure it all out. I think uh, we'd love to have all you back here because we were great. Um, we work together really well and it's really nice to work with all of you. So thank you so much. All right. So moving on now we're at the adjournment time. So if there's no further business, I'd like to adjourn this meeting at uh, 442. I got a little bit of time back from our last month's meeting for you all. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy everybody. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving yeah. everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Bye bye. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Good holiday. Rocky's meets. <laughs> <laughs>